our guy, friend of the show, Kalani Sataki, Brigham Young football coach. It's great to finally yeah. like meet you in person. We've seen you on Zoom. You played at Waco. They played there at, 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 in Provo. How you doing, man? Good to see doing you. Doing great and great to see you guys. And, and this is uh, this is awesome. I, I'm enjoying every part of this right now. We asked Dana Holgerson this about, you know, you had the midnight countdown on the 30th of June and then all of that. And I said, are you still kind of enjoying this march to the – he goes, I'm tired of celebrating. I'm trying – I want to get get to football. Do you feel the same way? No, I feel, I feel like the uh, – We've been we've been talking about this for the last two years. Let's celebrate some more. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like I've had to tell our team and everybody, including media members, back in 2021, like, hey guys, let's focus on the now, not worry about the future. And then last year, let's focus on the now. And now that it's here, it's like, okay, fine. Just everybody talk about the Big Twelve. <laughs> let's let it go. Let's just try to dive into it. And I'm so I'm good with all the celebrations and all that stuff. I I understand where Dana's coming from too, but but um. I, I'm gonna be live it up as much. As, yeah, yeah I, I feel like, um, and I'm speaking for the for the BYU fans. Th this is this is an awesome experience for them. And if you would have told me when I was a little kid that um, that, that the team that I was rooting for is going to be in a in a big time conference and, and specifically the Big Twelve, I would have just thought no way. And now we're here. And then not only are we here, but now I played for Lavelle, and now I'm the head coach. So you can imagine the dream that I'm living right now. And and nobody pinched me. I'm I'm not ready to wake up yet. What what would he think of this? Oh, um, I think he would take a lot of a lot of um, excitement and pride for it. But Lavelle never thinks about himself. He mm -hmm. thinks about others. I think he he would be really excited for the fans and for the players and for everybody being involved. Um, for the alumni, those that have come through and and made BYU football what it is today, that that put in a lot of their sweat, blood, and tears through it. And I'm just trying to do my job as as a head coach to try to make them all proud, including Lavelle. I'd like to ask uh, everybody who's new just what they think of the experience because being an independent, you didn't have conference no. media days. And I know it's it's a grind because it's several hours and you're doing dozens no, of interviews. Is, but This is a grind? I'm loving this, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, th listen, I, yeah. I, I was joking around about it when I was in the press conference that that because uh, Keaton Slovis has been to a bunch of these, you know, and, <laughs> and and so I was like trying to get pointers like, hey, Keaton, tell me what it's going to be like, man. What? Cause I, we haven't done this. And he's like, coach. I've known you long enough to know that you're going to be just fine and you're going to love it. And he's right. Uh, I love every part of this. And this is really cool. Such a cool experience. I'm, I'm so happy that we got to bring our five players here. Mm -hmm. I, I wish all of them could experience this, but I'm already looking forward to next year. Yeah. And, and so let's talk about that because it, the season's around the corner. There's a lot more between now and then we just had Keaton Slovis on and he didn't quite understand the history of quarterback until he started to understand about the history of quarterback. Was that part of the sell when you got him to come, or was that maybe once he learned after he got on campus? Well, I think the sell was to to let him know that we're that he's needed, number one, and then to see how his unique skills could really help elevate our team, and, and then and to take advantage of our opportunities of going to the Big Twelve, um, and then the rest is just getting him around the people. And, and my goal is to get him interact with the players but also interact with the fans. And once he connected with them, I mean, it's it's like he's been here for so long already. I He hasn't even played a down yet in our in, in our uniform uh, against anybody else, but um, it, uh, it just seems like he's always been a part of us. He's always He, he just fits us so well. And I'm really looking forward to him uh, because the, the transition was so seamless for him to be here as our, as our, as our player and, and as our starting quarterback that, uh, I, I think he's going to I think it's going to be a huge benefit and a huge uh, um, advantage when he gets to the field. I think it's going to show you. You know, you can look at, you know, <clears throat> film of a guy and see, well, we would like to have this guy's skill set if we could get him, especially a transfer portal guy mm -hmm. who has so much that like like Keaton does. But the key is for you, like when you give them in the room, like is the first thing you're looking for culture fit right then, because you, you already know, like you wouldn't be talking to him if you weren't if you didn't already see him on yeah. tape. Yeah, yeah, because you're right. The the the, the tape in, in itself is like it's impressive, mm -hmm. but but you want to see is he going to be uh, is he going to be able to add to our culture and is he going to be able to bring um, a, a uniqueness to it and 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 be somebody that we can rally around, especially that position. And um, when when he came on his visit, it was like okay, this is our this is our guy, and 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 the the thing that we didn't want to do was also. Uh, name him the starter. We want him to compete for it. And I, I like that 
uh, when we were talking to him in, in the recruiting process that we said, hey, listen, you're going to come here. We're going to bring some really good quarterbacks and you're going to have to compete for your spot. He's like, sounds good. And then that's what that was music to my ears. And so uh, when he went through spring ball, it's pretty evident that he was the guy that, that needs to be the starter and the way we went with it. But I, I, I appreciate him doing things the right way, not being worried about um, NIL or anything like that. He's just like, if I do things the right way, then I'll be living my dream of playing football on Sundays. And that's, he saw that this is an opportunity. He saw that you can really do some really good things here. And then he saw that the environment and the culture and the, the, uh, the people involved with BYU you could really gel with. And, and, and it's been a great addition of uh, having him on our team. So we haven't talked to all of your players, but we talked to him, obviously, and we talked to Cody Epps. Uh, what was it like meeting Cody Epps for the first time? Because I'm just thinking of his personality and just yeah. how joyful mm-hmm. he seems. And we were saying, like, he's going to be good no matter what, football or, or otherwise. But what do you kind of recall from just getting to know him and, and the kind of person he is? Yeah, he, he's he's going to make a lot of money in life um, whenever he decides to stop playing football. Absolutely. Mm. But, but it's not because um, – of anything other than he has this charisma and this, uh, this this understanding of people that I really appreciate. And I've seen him since he came here as a young freshman. And it was important for me and our coaches to give him, empower him to, to make good decisions, to be a leader. Uh, I think sometimes people are given leadership um, responsibilities just because they're the senior, you know, and, and he's a guy that didn't hold back and he was leading right from the beginning when he was a freshman. And, uh, and I, I appreciate that our coaches and our team allowed him that opportunity to lead. And he went through some adversity with injuries and things like that. So you see some of the things that he's been able to appreciate. He doesn't, he doesn't take things for granted anymore. And um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's on our team. But uh, we have a lot of young men that, that are quality young men. And, and I can coach really good football players, but I, I love to coach really good young men. Okay, he, he, he's special. Yeah. yeah, as you mentioned. Was it a tough choice to come up with who you wanted to bring? Uh, or do you have a pretty good uh, foundation for, like, kind of how you wanted to do that? Or No, I, and I, t- I talked to our, our, our media members. I mean, we have a great staff that works with BYU, um, you know, our, com- our communications and media or relation department. They're awesome. And so it, they, they've known who's done well in interviews and who can really um, – this is our first time, so we wanted to make sure to have a good first impression – and these are the guys that that, that, that we feel like are going to do the best job representing our, our team at this 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 venue and this media day. So there's some guys that, that don't are not comfortable speaking in this type of setting that play great football and are great young men as well. But their charisma is a little bit different, you know, but it doesn't mean that they're they're less. It, their leadership's a little different, too. But uh, I, I want to make sure all those guys feel like they they can relish in their roles and that they're vital to our team. One of the Brigham Young fans who's we got a chat room that runs down the side of our YouTube channel. One of the best sports happenings in my 65 years of cheering on the Cougars is entering the Big 12. Yeah. That's yeah. that's that's kind of sums it up pretty well. Yeah, and it, it's the um it, it, it's it's hard not to get emotional thinking about it for the for these fans and and that that this is a pivotal moment in history that that uh and there's a lot of pride that comes in along with it and the, but to be involved with amazing partners with the institutions that are that are here uh I, i've mentioned before I've, I've been around um in these meetings and interacting with the coaches and the ad's and the administration presidents and i've been so impressed with all of them just just they're amazing people and and um you can see why their programs are are, are, are run so well and um you can't help but but appreciate them and, and, and admire what they've done. So it, it, for me, being part of this family is, is is a is I'm excited about it. But I want to make sure we're great partners as well. Did your eyes just water up a little bit when you were talking about that? Yeah, well, I'm thinking about that fan that's been alive for 65 years. This is his name's Claire Gunnell, by yeah, the way. And I and I I feel the same way. I I grew up BYU fan too. So this is this is my my 47 years of of living. This is a big part. This is going to be a huge like. Boom! This is one of the things that I remember. So th- this is the fact that we got the invite a couple of years ago was was one thing, but now that we're here, you're just living this dream, you know. And then we're gonna have fun with it. I, I'm not gonna make any statements or predictions, mm-hmm. 
but I know our fans will be excited and they'll cheer and we're going to try to do everything we can to, to, to make them cheer. I, I do have to go back to Cody Epps on, on one thing. He mentioned to us that all he watches on YouTube because he was talking about how excited he was to meet every coach and player and all these guys that he, he likes watching, but all he's been watching on YouTube is all the your opponent's spring games mm -hmm. and Sam Houston state. That's what he's doing. When you hear as a coach, when you hear that, does that like warm the cockles of your heart and go, Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. And then when I walk through the office at random times in the evening, in the morning and players are watching film, uh, that makes me really excited. Cause it, there's another thing to, to, to have meetings and uh, mandatory stuff. But when the boys are actually doing this on their own and there, there's an intrinsic motivation and that's something special. And that that's, that's the leadership on the team, but it's also, um, guys just trying to hold each other accountable. And, and you know, we're, it's, it's those times where you're do, doing the off season stuff. Our guys, our team has gotten really close to golfing. They like, they, they mm. golf. They're not really good golfers. <laughs> <laughs> but they actually, our team has probably golfed more. I've seen our guys golf more now than ever before this year, especially. And I don't mind it because, uh, they're, they're spending hours together. They're not looking at their phones. They're not, doing social media stuff. They're just out there hanging out in, in nature and they you play golf and you, and you appreciate the people that actually cut the grass that, that, that got everything in, in shape. And then you don't mind replacing your divots. You don't mm -hmm. mind doing all that stuff. And, and you start to realize that these guys that actually spend four to five hours together, uh, there's, there's, I'd rather them be doing that than playing video games. And to get good, you need reps, right? And yeah, you, know, you got to play. I, I can't promise that any of them are any good because I suck. <laughs> but I, I like playing golf. But I, I, I like it a lot better with with a company that I that I get to play with. Question from a, a BYU fan: I'd like to know how coach or the program manages the mission trips and how they backfill their roster. And is that as much of a thing now as it was before? <clears throat> it's always difficult because um, when guys serve missions, they all come back in different shapes. So, so like the I mean, you go serve a, a mission in Indonesia compared to Brazil or, you know, um, Riverside, California. It's going to be way different, the things that you're uh, that are available to you. So we have to see the type of shape that they're in when they get home and then to see when, when the best time for us to start them. And so a lot of times guys will get home in July or August and then we'll just start them in January to get them kind of give them a little buffer time to get ready for that. Um, there's some guys that that show up and in, in home in July and they're ready to play, you know. So um, that's always hard to to, to maneuver around and, and to manage, but um, we kind of have a, a good pool of guys that are the in betweens, and then we try to work with it. Uh, there's a lot of Brigham Young fans who are watching this right now. Love this guy, love this coach because he's one of us because he's been here with us. Go Cougs! I, it just yeah. gives this constant. I could go over it many, many, many times. We got to know you when you played Baylor in 21, and they were really good, mm -hmm. and I remember that. And then we got to know you when the game was announced, plus it was about to be the uh, addition to the Big 12. And then, I mean, it's like you're a part of our show. Honestly. Yeah, I, I've it, known you guys for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and it's, it seems like it's been five years, but it's been such a whirlwind, and we appreciate the access you've given us during the week of games or – after spring or whatever, man, it's been great. And we appreciate you spending time with us today, too. I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to talk to you and, and, and uh, talk about our culture and our fans, you know, and our program. And so that, that just give me the time to just do that. I appreciate it. So I always, I always lean favorably towards you guys. So Thank that, you. Thank you. And you guys look way better in person than on the, over the radio. Well, no, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah this TV you. thing, we don't, we don't, we're not always. <laughs> I, I think that we can all admit that we, we, I mean, I, I have the face for radio, right? So, so, uh, <laughs> no, like, <laughs> all fullbacks, all fullbacks are good in, yeah. in my books. That's so. right. Uh, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, appreciate guys. Appreciate it. Kalani Sataki, Brigham Young football coach. Cody Epps, Keaton Slovis, and we're not done. Back in Arlington on 365 Sports.